What's up, Zox fam? And we're back with some more Deathlight. Now, we have to get into Fu's shirt's in-game build. Obviously, kind of diving a little bit deeper into that relationship with him and Embla. Um, and really, is that something you should be chasing? I know for some of you guys that might have missed her raid up banner, you might be in the position where you're like, hey, should I be wish stoning her from the wish stone banner that we just normally have reoccurring? Um, and we're going to dive into that, right? But let's start off with Fu's shirt. Now, um, this is obviously a Esper that I would say say personally if you already have Embla you're gonna want him right now the thing is is that um, just to recap on his skills uh, the S1 you basically have uh, billowing strike so you're able to do uh, an attack to one enemy damage is up to um, uh, 120% 50% uh, of uh, your attack 120% of your defense and then you gain the smoke screen which is a 10% uh, defense increase damage mitigation increase of 10% uh, and damage uh, that you deal recovers your HP healing 10% of the damage dealt and it's a max of five stacks and it will not be removed from round to round so you can use this in wave clearing uh, you also have your passive thick haze where you're able to gain five stacks of smoke screen at the start of the turn um, and upon reaching five stacks of smoke screen become immune to all controls uh, when both Embla and Fushu are present. Embla cannot die. This effect will be cleared permanently upon Fushu's death and only takes effect in PvP battles. Now, after Embla casts her basic ability, Fushu launches a pursuit attack with his basic ability. Uh, after Fushu casts his basic ability, Embla launches her pursuit attack with her basic ability. And then Fogbreaker attacks one enemy two times. Damage per hit is 10% um, of attack plus up to 120% defense, and it ignores shield. Uh, and then you gain one stack of smoke screen. Now, um, the main thing here too as well is that when you're actually like considering like all of this text here, uh, basically the main thing is is that Fushir won't be stunned in um, when he has this up, uh, which is great. Like, cause you don't have to worry about being slept by Hilda, being frozen by uh, Farah, um, being CC'd by T, um, being stunned by S1 from Queen Mother. Like, you don't have to worry about any of that crap with him, which is great, right? Um, and then of course you have the eightfold misplate, which is uh, an eight hit on one enemy now the reason why this ability is so good is because if you think about the embla corrupted c proc you need this ability uh to be going after so typically you would want him going right after embla she needs to land corrupted seed uh, and then you would actually have him going right after so that you're able to actually detonate it right uh so this ignores shield and won't miss uh this ability unlocks when fusher has five stacks of smoke screen after casting this ability consumes five stacks of smoke screen and gains uh dispersal for one turn and this ability's cooldown will not be affected by any other cooldowns, right? So that's essentially his kit. Now, you have the 30% defense increase as well. Now, let's actually get into the build I'm using on him. I'm actually going with the relief set. So when teammates cast basic ability, the wearer has a 25% chance of performing assist attacks with their with their basic ability now if we look at what his basic ability is every time he uses his basic ability he gains one stack of smoke screen so we can utilize the other four allies that we have on the composition to help him enable himself that's going to be very beneficial to you now the thing is that you could have done something similar where it's like you know a relief with avatara so you have more chances to proc your s1 and just kind of like utilizing that as a way for you to kind of build those stacks up and actually i'm not sure if you procs off avatar but i know for a fact he does proc off of the relief set um but even then so you still need defense percent because that's a huge part to his scaling so you could argue you could go for that with in your sub stats but i would say one of the best things you could possibly do as well so that you can only be you know really having to maintain or aim for one thing at least initially um is going with stone vine set which is defense percent um and then going for crit rate subs to make your life a little bit easier now of course with that we have about 60% crit rate ideally 70% would be the sweet spot an additional 120% uh, crit damage we have an additional almost 2k defense um, and about an additional 800 attack because he does scale off of that just a little bit right um, 20k HP which is pretty solid so you know nothing too too crazy um, but then again we also have about uh, 60 was that one 70 speed on him which is actually not bad so we got to do some you know some tweaking some relic boosted and you'll see these stats go up significantly more and of course with the divinate you'll also be getting more out of his kit as well uh now of course that's basically his build i'll show you guys uh and let me actually see if i have my emblem built 
properly um so again kind of the same ordeal the main thing is that with embla she needs to be landing that corrupted seed proc so i just have her on a basic set um you can get a little bit more vested in it but she's on an attack um attack set crit damage attack attack right uh now the other thing that's also worth noting here as well um is that when you're also looking at another potential build that you could do for uh future you could go with crit damage um or the thunder set right um and the reason why that is is because the thunder set actually is going to be giving you more crit damage value and that's going to be great on bosses and things that of that nature and it still will work really well with you uh needing to be able to have the ability to clean up after embla drops her corrupted seed so if you're having some damage issues i would recommend going with the thunder set um with the same stat values crit damage percent defense percent and speed um so that you have the ability to be able to actually clean up um you're going to be i would definitely say in pvp um you're probably a watch that video after or before this one um but i did do some testing in pvp and like one of the units you have to get rid of and you have to kill as soon as you possibly can is mavis so that's like the big thing is that if you can get this team or this unit um to be able to kill every single time that embla procs or corrupted c proc you basically won right like that's just how that kind of goes obviously you need to consider the rest of your team but nonetheless at least for their part in the job they'll be able to always do that part right uh so that's that now if we go back and this is just to kind of show you guys you are you, are, you already know how it is we gotta we gotta do a little bit little bit of showcasing so let's actually go to the vr battlegrounds here okay so in the vr battleground we're going to be running t we're going to be running embla and then of course we're going to be bringing our fu shirt who's all the way at the back here all right cool um i don't think we want to bring anything else maybe support healing might be a thing that might be the only other thing we might need maybe yeah, maybe. Yeah, that, that was probably the only other thing that we'll bring, right? So let's see how this works. We should be good, though. Yeah, the main thing and the only thing you won't see because this is like a PvE setting is the uh, ability that Embla has where she's able to basically not die, right? Um, but basically, we're going to go S3 with, um, with Embla, right? And that's why, honestly, her being the slowest also is not a bad thing either because if you're running her T, T is going to always put her first before Fushir. So you're not going to have to go too crazy with trying to figure that out um let's actually go shield here now because of the s3 um he might kill if he had an attack up or a defense up actually he or actually no he does so let's actually see here let's see what he does let's see what his damage okay so he did get the spread so he so we at least got the spread and you know what i'm thinking of this in, in like the sense of like pvp because he would have killed on pvp um but these are like super vested pve units level 100 i just completely forgot about that but honestly there we go with that so we've seen a relief set now we have him currently at one stack because that relief set is coming through and procking for us let's actually work on some of those other so we got two three boom and let's see see if we can get another relief or uh, relief set proc because those relief sets are going to be what especially if you don't have them skilled up especially if you don't have any resos in them right there relief we got it boom four and so that's going to be basically helping us uh throughout this process to get him back into a, a place where he can use his s3 um what are we doing here we can go s1 go again and now we're at five stacks so now the next turn that we get with Fushir, which should be in a second, boom, right? He has his S3 backup because remember when you have his S3 or you use his S3 the first time until you get smoke screen of stacks of five again, it stays locked even if it's cooled down, right? So now we can actually go and let's S3 here, boom. And then we start working on that again. We have the uh, dispersal. Um, he actually could have went, but dude died. So there's that. So yeah, we're going to try to clean this up, see uh, what the damage is looking like on the end. That, and that's the main thing I really wanted to see. I wanted to see what the damage was going to look like. Ooh, don't kill her, please. Please don't kill her. Um, let's try to... Yeah, there we go. Let's, let's get some spreads here. Okay, nice. Okay, cool, 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 cool. She's, she's doing all right. She's doing all right. She almost died. <laughs> she's doing okay. Uh, let's go for pushback here. Leon, save the day. 
Nice. Look at all that shield, dude. Now, I wish that we had a, a, a way to actually change up what the enemies could do. Because then I could show you guys the shield and how you could still do the damage. Because he does do damage through shields. And that is going to definitely be more prominent in a, like probably a PvP situation. Because there's just more people, more, li more than likely, that's going to have shields, right? That's being propped. So the fact that he ignores shields is actually kind of insane. All right, so we're going to basically clean this up real quick. All right, boom. So the damage is actually not too bad. Okay. And so, like, the main thing is you run them together, and you can even continue to run them in, like, a detonation team or DLT team. Like, if Hilda was on this team, it would be GG. Like, they would, they would be messing everything up right now. All right, so sweet. And even when he's taunted, he still uh, builds up stacks. So that that's kind of just the beauty. It's like it's if he hits, he's basically building up a stack. Like that's just what it is. Nice, we got a detonation there. All right, so we're almost done because I want to see overall what Embla's contribution is because this will kind of give you a good idea of what fights will look like when you're actually in like. Um, you know, tower, or if you're doing something else, PVE oriented, doing story, stuff like that. Boom, boom, boom. All right, and then let's see, boom. So let's see how much damage Embla contributed. So Embla basically, Embla basically does all the damage, <laughs> like essentially. Like, and the crazy thing is, is that because of the fact, right? Because of the fact that Fushirt's there, he's basically helping enable her. He's enabling her more than she's enabling him. And so that's kind of like that relationship there is that when you're looking at where you can utilize them, most of the places that you can typically use Embla, if you can use her there, then Fushirt should be able to work there too because he's just there to enable her. Now, I am going to have a separate video coming for PvP doing my first time testing um, on like more of the in-game server, just kind of seeing like what's working, what's not working, um, and of course getting some feedback from you guys. But yeah, nonetheless, that definitely seems to be more of the idea here is that basically if you are deciding to or you have decided to pull for shirt, uh, Fu Shirt, he is a unit that is going to be enabling Embla and not exactly the other way around. Uh, the reason why I would say that is just because of the fact that she does doesn't have anything in her kit that's oriented to Fusher at all. Um, so without, you know, for example, without him, she still operates the same. But for him, he he literally doesn't have portions of his kit that won't work if you're in certain game modes because she's not there right so i think that that's kind of like the verdict here which again i still think as a standalone or individual unit he's still great but he does feel like he is one of those units that was made to definitely make her more of a monster than she already was so granted it falls into the continuity of the story but that's going to be that with this one guys let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below everyone stay blessed and i'll catch you guys in the next one